Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson along with Ty Hayes. Ty Hayes from, is from Around the Table Sports. I definitely follow his YouTube channel. Nick Sheridan expected to be hired as the Alabama offensive coordinator, at least promoted to the offensive coordinator position following the departure of Ryan Grubb to the Seattle Seahawks. Here with Ty to give our quick points um, on this. So first of all, what jumps out? And, and if you're just you're like, who is Nick Sheridan? He was on the Washington staff. He was coming here to Alabama to coach tight ends, and it looks like he could be elevated uh, to OC. And we're still kind of waiting to see what happens with Jamarcus Shepard, who's the wide receivers coach. Uh, but, Ty, give me your first uh, opening assessment. Yeah, so when I look at this, one of the things that makes a lot of sense to me is a few things. First and foremost, Kalen DeBoer has talked about in the past that he likes having his coordinators have some level of autonomy, meaning mm -hmm. he wants them to be able to work with a staff that they're going to be able to succeed with. So they have to have some level of say, some level of comfortability mm -hmm. with the guys around them. The reason why Sheridan makes sense when we think about it through that lens is he knows what DeBoer wants. He knows DeBoer's offense, but more than that, he has familiarity with some of the other coaches like a coach Shepard, right? It's going to be interesting to see what they do along the offensive line, but I do think that him understanding some of the guys already on this offensive staff and understanding the system, that really gives him a leg up. And my second point kind of piggybacks off of the first one, and that's that he understands what Kalen DeBoer wants to do. He knows the offense that will be ran. So it's going to be interesting. I think I have some excitement and some questions about this. But listen, we're going to have to wait and see how it looks like. Here with uh, Ty Hayes. And I, I think on the bumper, he'll probably be promoted to offensive coordinator. So we can update that bumper. Um, here covering news as it happens right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Um, Ty, do you think when you have a player or I'm sorry, a coach like Jamarcus Shepard, and who was uh, a passing game coordinator at Washington. And I know um, people were saying that there could pot potentially be a, a co-offensive coordinator take care of Alabama. Do you think that makes sense? Uh, do we see some of that? Or do you think we just go with like one OC with that being Nick Sheridan? Well, listen, at the end of the day, one person calls a play. Right. So I don't mind it because the defense is doing something similar. And it's something that's popping up across college football, this co-coordinator role. Jamarcus Shepard was the passing game coordinator at Washington, and we just got done talking about that. I don't know how deep his implementation was in terms of was he really game planning along with Ryan Grubb? And if he was, Washington had the number one and the number two passing offense under his watchful eye. And if that's the case, if he was really in depth in those workout rooms grinding, I say promote him. I say make him co-offensive coordinator because, Kyle, you don't want to lose Shepard if you can help it. Early reviews of that guy seems to be really well liked, and his production at the wide receiver position, what he has been able to accomplish, is certainly notable. Here with uh, Ty Hayes from Around the Table Sports talking about um, Nick Sheridan. This is according to Matt Zenit of 24-7 Sports. Um that he could be promoted or is expected to be promoted to the Alabama offensive coordinator following the departure of Ryan Grubb. Um, as I started to think about uh, Grubb leaving, and uh, I started to think about this, is the fact that the offense is really under Coach Kalen DeBoer. And I was, I, I'm curious to see his role in the offensive coordinator role going forward. Um, I know titles mean, you know, titles can mean different things. But I think coach like last year, for example, Kevin still was titled the defensive coordinator. But, you know, Coach Saban said he was the defensive coordinator um, following his retirement from Alabama. Um, you look to the fact that Kalen DeBoer is an offensive minded coach. Uh, he was the OC at Indiana, Fresno, Eastern Michigan, where he also worked with quarterbacks. One of the things that I do like about this particular move is that Nick Sheridan also has. Um, some quarterback experience working with the quarterbacks at Indiana, where he was the OC and quarterbacks coach and also at uh, South Florida. So it's important to me to continue to see that development from the quarterback standpoint, because I think over the past couple of years, this quarterback room has been, um, I guess, you know, shorted a little bit in terms of they had Bill O'Brien, um, then they had uh, Tommy Reese, and then they had uh, Ryan Grubb for like a month. So if you look to the quarterbacks on the roster, those are the quarterback those those are the quarterbacks coaches that they had to deal with um, or were working with during that point in time. So maybe Nick Sheridan, you know, could help those guys uh, evolve. So what what's your take on uh, Coach Kalen DeBoer being an offensive minded coach? And you know, maybe Sheridan has that title, but maybe theoretically it could be Coach Kalen DeBoer's offense really calling the plays. 
Yeah, at the end of the day, this is his offense, right? And that's one of the things I've been trying to really fall back on whenever we have the conversations about Grubb is that as much as I think Grubb is going to be an exciting coach to watch, to follow, I think he's going to be a great offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Saban wanted him. This is DeBoer's offense. DeBoer has been a play caller before, and he's done so highly effectively. And so at the end of the day, I'm always a little bit less concerned if an offensive-minded coach is losing an offensive coordinator when they're the ones who have the offense that was being called, right? It's not like he's relying on the offensive coordinator to bring in his offense. I would be a little bit more concerned if DeBoer had lost the defensive coordinator in the middle of February, and now you're sitting there like, where do we go from here? Because DeBoer, to your point, Kyle, he's an offensive-minded guy. So at the end of the day, he can do this. Like, he has done it before. He can do this. I'm not as concerned about an offensive-minded guy losing an offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any questions for me as we kind of, like, switch gears real quick? Yeah, I have a big question. What do you think they do at the offensive line position? Because, Kyle, as, as much as I would have loved Grubb to be here, and I thought he would be staying. So I'm going to eat that crow. I will not shy away from the fact that I was wrong. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. But I do think that as much as I wanted Grubb to be here, and as much as I think he's going to be a great offensive coordinator, in my opinion, the biggest loss is Huff. Mm -hmm. Because Alabama's offensive line has been all over the place. Kyle, I don't know if you heard it yesterday. I was talking about over the past three years, they've averaged as the 99th offensive line in college football. Mm -hmm. That's unacceptable. Yeah, You're not going to win like that, mm -hmm. how they've won like that really changed the way I viewed Alabama football and the level of success they had, because it's even more impressive than I think people realize. Who do you like for offensive line coach? You know, that's been tough. I mean, I, I think that a lot of this um, has to do with the timing of Alabama looking for an offensive line coach. For, for example, in my morning segment, uh, we looked at names like Bill Durkin, who's at Liberty, um, who has really good credentials. And I think is a, um, has that older mindset of that old school coach. Like I love when Kyle flood was here. I, I'm not going to throw Kyle flood's name back in here because I think that ship is sell. But one thing that I really liked about him was how he was able to work with the offensive line in terms of getting those guys reps. I mean, they won the Joe more Joe Moore award here uh, in 2020 under him. Um, we, we looked at a guy like uh, Tim Drevno as well. We looked at Matt Luke. I really like Matt Luke, but I think it's more of like a timing issue with him just getting to Clemson. Um, so I don't know, but I think, in, when I kind of look collectively at this coaching staff, I do like the coaching staff overall. I just think that uh, losing Scott Huff is probably the bigger blow um, of losing Ryan Grubb or Scott Huff when I kind of step back. Because, look, the offensive line, you do have some components. I don't know how it's going to shake out. I know that you have Parker Brelsford coming in, who we really like. I know that you have Tyler Booker, one of the top in the SEC at the guard position, who theoretically could even swap out to tackle. And you could say the same thing for Jaden Roberts. So someone to come in here and develop that offensive line group, I think it's critical. So while we're seeing Nick Sheridan, you might have some different opinions about really uh, Nick Sheridan being promoted to Alabama OC. You still have to take two coaches in. And I think one of those guys is certainly going to be an offensive line coach and somebody else um, in as well because you need 10 coaches underneath Coach Kalen DeBoer. Don't know who's going to coach special teams, but overall still feel good about this uh, coaching staff. And, and the thing that I sleep easy on, if you're an Alabama Crimson Tide football fan, is the fact that Coach Kalen DeBoer is an offensive-minded coach. Um, so it is his philosophy. Um, so I like that. And then you you start to look at the players that are returning and you feel even better. So that's kind of my assessment on offensive line coach. But it's hard to kind of build an offensive line um, coaching hot board. We did that this morning. If you want to go and rewatch that video, if you're out there, you can. Um, so we'll see who comes in. But I think that is going to kind of be um, a, a real uh, make or break for this coaching staff. I, I think it's that impactful, to be honest. 100%. And to add on to your point, to really drive home, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Sheridan has worked with DeBoer. He knows what DeBoer wants. They have a pre-existing relationship. And DeBoer has said he wants his coordinators to have some level of power in terms of working with people they're excited to work with that they feel like they can succeed with. Having that relationship, that's a massive place to start. And it makes a lot of sense that this is the direction they're going. Yeah, I mean, you you see uh, a lot of the ties to Coach Kalen DeBoer from his staff. I think everyone pretty much, you know, has worked with Coach Kalen DeBoer in some fashion or another um, outside of, I think, uh, Maurice Lindquist. I don't know if their paths have always, uh, if they cross paths, but um, like the staff so far, how it's coming together, um, I need to, you know, kind of think about uh, more offensive line coaches' names, but um, Nick Sheridan, and that was something that even Adam Rittenberg of uh, the NFL said that 
and he could be uh, promoted to this offensive coordinator position. It looks like that is the case. Again, none of this has been officially published by the University of Alabama. When you go to Alabama's official coaching um, you know, roster, it's literally just Coach Kalen DeBoer. So still waiting for the official information for uh, Alabama to release. But um, we got you covered right here at Bama Football on YouTube. He's Ty Hayes. My name is Kyle Henderson. Definitely run the thumbs up on all these videos, and we appreciate you guys. And we will cover news right here on Alabama Football as it happens. All right, that was our live call.